Julie is going to give her fourth speech from the Competent Communicator Program with a focus on how to say it. And her speech is titled, Modern Romance. Toastmaster, fellow members, and guests. We live in the age that we turn to our screen for nearly every decision. Where to eat, where to vacation, where to eat on vacation, where to get a treatment for the food poisoning that you got from the restaurant you ate on vacation, where to write a negative review, call out the restaurant that give you the food poisoning and ruin your vacation. It is no surprise that Squing becomes the first place that we turn to when looking for romance. Because we need someone to take care of us when we got food poisoning on vacation, right? <laughs> so during these days, one of the amazing social changes is the rise of online dating and the decline of the other ways of needing a romantic partner. A few decades ago, people will find a decent person in their neighborhood. Their family probably won't meet. After deciding neither of the party seems like a murderer, they will get married. In 2005, a researcher finds that only few Americans has online dating experience. Four years later, in, by 2009, 22% of the straight couples met online. And by 2012, more than one third of the couples who got married in the United States met online. So how many people here have tried online dating? And I have tried, and I met my husband, Robin, online three years ago. But before I met my husband, I was so frustrated with online dating. And it's not only just me. A lot of singles compare it as a second job, more duty than flirtation. These days, we seem to have unlimited options, but why it is still so exhausting to find the right person? I'm going to tell you two reasons that I found. The first one is that there is too much filtering on this dating website. The internet offers seemingly endless supply of people who are single and looking to date, as well as tools to filter and search exactly what you are looking for. You can specify height, location, education, and basically anything else. Are you looking for a guy whose favorite book is The Martian and whose favorite sport is baseball? You're only just a few click away from this tree. But people are horrible at knowing what they want. Researchers working with Match.com found that the kind of partner people said they want often doesn't match up with what they were actually interested in. So people rely too much on filtering may often trap themselves into a corner. Let's also look close on the search algorithm. The scientists studied the characteristic of the couples who met on OkCupid. They discovered that one third have matching answer for three surprisingly important questions. Do you like horror movies? Have you ever traveled alone around another country? And will it be fun to throw everything you have away and go live on the sailboat? <laughs> three very random questions, right? But OkCupid okay believes that the answer to these three questions may touch on deep personal issues that matter to people more than they realize. Let's look at the second reason. If you're not using the filtering at all, you may end up with too many options. Having more options not only make it harder to decide, but also may make us less satisfied with our choices. Because we cannot help thinking if, I'm, uh, if I were wrong. One simple example, you walk into a grocery store, 
a shop assistant offer you samples of jam. If there are only three kinds of jam, you can quickly pick one you like. But if they offer you 30 kinds, you are more likely to step in and have tried of all of, all of them, but it will be 10 times harder to pick one. Since there are too many options, people don't want to invest too much on the first day. And because the odds are it won't be a love connection. And it's so hard to get excited about a new person while doing resume exchange over a beer and a burger. So my suggestion is do something fun, adventurous instead, and see what kind of rapport that you have. And if you think it is too stressful to fill out the questionnaire and to get the match, you can also try a swipe away app such as Tinder. It may make your dating experience fun and efficient. If you're not familiar with Tinder, it is a location-based app that user uses swiping emotions to choose from photos of other users. And basic idea is that swiping right for potentially a good match. And if both of you swipe right, the system will facilitate a conversation for you too. People always say that the biggest criticism is they encourage increasing shallowness. But I think it is too cynical. Let's say if you're walking to a bar or a party, often you have to go by is the faces. And that's what you use to decide if you're going to gather your cards to talk to someone. Isn't the swipe app a huge party full of faces? So in conclusion, what I learned from my experience is that online dating is just a vehicle for me to meet more people. It's not actually a place for date. So I always say that instead of calling these things dating services, I think they should be called introducing services because they enable you to go out and meet people yourself. Today's online dating app may provide you so many different ways to find someone. But here comes the hard part. Changing all your sweatpants, go meet someone you find online in person, and trying for a connection so that you can settle down and get right back to those sweatpants. <laughs> <laughs>